get it. It happened just like that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Wait. Well, go on. Hey, what's going on, man? No. Hey, man, this is a day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, man, check it, man. I got a guy here, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. If you've been to the rodeo or if you've been around some horses, he might just showed up. We don't know yet, man. But we been to get. We about to get to know, right? Yes. Mr. J. Brown's in the building, the cowboy boss, one of the baddest cowboys on this side of the state of Texas, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for having me. Man, today, thank you man. for coming, man. Bless. Man, you one of them guys, man. You know, at the end of the day, you weird to me because it's like, what is this man <laughs> doing? You know, you little cowboy got to listen to the country. You know what I'm saying? It got to be straight Jason Aldean, Darius Rucker, and yeah. all them other boys, or Tim McGraw. You know what I'm talking about? See, but we bring, we bringing a little bit of different twang to it. You know what I mean? Like okay. we don't we mixing hip hop and country. You can't even say that because DJ Chose just said that he branching off into the country because he his um, alter ego is what's his other name? Norman again? West. Norman West. <laughs> My boy be on it. Yeah, so yeah. he's branching off into that Facts. category. And he actually doing straight country. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, what I do is it's just me. It's my lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's not something that I'm trying to do. Is who I am. I'm a rapper by horses. I'm a rapper by my life, the struggle, the come up, you know what I mean? Being at the NFR and being in the trenches with my guys and riding horses down the boulevard, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. Okay, so tell let us, let our audience know a little bit about you. Um, can you say you're rapping about all these things, but we wanna hear about these things right now. Like where you were raised, because you you're raised in Houston, you said. Yeah, South Side. South Side. Um when were you introduced to horses? Um, your mom and dad were you raised with both parents how many siblings you have the whole works go ahead alright so I come from the south side of Houston mm -hmm. raised by my mama uh, I ain't meet my father till I was like 18 you know what I mean why yeah um, he was locked up okay the whole time from I never even knew who he was she never told you nah did she know yeah just checking cause some yeah. women don't yeah she know okay. uh, it was so just, how how did she tell you, and um, or did he just come find you and say, I'm your daddy? I found him. But So who told you he was your daddy? My godmother. Okay. Yeah. You went to her asking her? Nah, so like he said, I'm an interesting dude. Um, okay, tell me the story. Back then, I used to do tattoos, mm -hmm. and I was doing my honor tattoo. Mm -hmm. She was like, boy, the older you get, the more you look like that man. I'm like, I don't look like nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, Because I ain't look like my mom or nobody in my family. She was like, JP. And... How I find him? She's like, when your uncle called you, ask him about him. Which my uncle was currently incarcerated for a murder case. Okay. And he was gone for like twenty years. You and know this is saying? your mom's sister. Yeah. I mean, your mom's brother. I mean. Nah, this was the guy. godmother's uh, brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, when he called me, I'm like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Who is JP? And he kind of lights me up. He was like, we'll talk about it later on when I get out. I'm like, nigga, you in jail for a murder? How right. the fuck you gonna talk about it? <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh. So it just so happened, he was getting out like two weeks later. Wow. It That's was, why he said that. Yeah, it was around Christmas, and uh, he came home. I found his people before he came home. I looked just like him. Oh, so he was getting out two weeks later? Yeah. Oh, your dad. So how did you know that How did you know that he was getting out two weeks later? How did you find that out? My uncle finally told me. He was like, oh, he went on and told he you? He was like, yo, man, locked up. Woo, woo, woo. So uh, he, he ended up getting out. I went and found him myself, and when I looked at him, I was like, damn. That nigga looked just like me. Like a ghost. But hold on, so when did you tell your mom that you were inquiring about him or that you even found him or anything at all? After I had already found him. And yeah. met him face to face? Yeah. Then you, what was her reaction? Uh, it was just kind of like a awkward silence and then we kind of just like bristled up in the rug, you know what I mean? Like, just being honest, because, I mean, shit, I was already a, a man at the time. Right. I, I had a baby on the way at 17. Mm. So... You know, I was doing my thing already. So how old were you when all of this transpired? 18. 18? Yeah. Um, how did you, what did your dad say to you for the first time when you saw him face to face? Shit, he looked at me like I looked at him. Like, damn, you look just like me. Oh, really? Yeah. And shit, it was, 
he kind of tried to make up for you know what I'm saying not being there and shit. Mm-hmm. But how how do you make up? You can't make up. It ain't no making up from that. You but know at the mean? end of the day, but you, he was locked up though, so it's not like exactly. he had a choice at that time. Yeah, but he knew. So you're saying he could have no, but you living with your mama, he couldn't just call you. All right, you man. We I'm from the same neighborhood where that man grew up at. You know what I'm saying? They could have reached out to me some kind of way. You feel me? Like, but he just, probably didn't feel comfortable doing it, man. He might have felt like it was better he didn't even reach out to you so that you could just be who you are. And what if right. I feel like it was better if I didn't meet him at all? And then that would have been cool. He probably would have moved on because you you the one <laughs> when found him. He yeah. probably would have left, left you be. Yeah, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Like, but it was, it was a blessing because like. I was always curious to why I had curly hair, why I, why I was light skinned and my people was dark. You know what I mean? Like, what did he say to you? Like, like he he talked he talked to you for about an hour or so, or did he give you a day or what? Man, what did? I mean, I locked in with him because like I wanted that bond. You know what I'm saying? So when he got out, I made sure I took care of him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I pick him up every day. Let's go do this. Do he was that. at the halfway house or something? Nah, he was out complete. He had done this 14 mm-hmm. years and came home. Wow. Yeah. Did you um? How, do you have a relationship with him now? So so, like I, I call and check on him. You know what I'm saying? Like just to make sure he's alright. You have other brothers and sisters on his side? Nah, nah. It's just you the only son on him. Yeah, you the only child with him. Yeah, that's probably he probably don't know what to deal with it when he was dealing with young. You got to realize, man, men be insecure in situations that won't even say nothing. You know, mm-hmm. we we cave men. You know that. And he comes from a different generation where you didn't talk about certain things. You know right. what I mean? Right. And then him. There's no excuse, though. Nah. There's no excuse. But what can change him? And I learned that I learned that from, see it. from my husband is the fact that if you every day call him and say, I love you, even if you don't get I love you back, you know, or just being there for him, it, you'll start to see his gradual opening up. But the difference is that you don't know how he was when he was younger. You can only hear stories from people around him like how he used to be. I think you know, I know what I mean? You think you know? Because he's still doing the same shit. <laughs> yeah, but you still, with forgiveness, you can change anything. Yeah, you I know forgive I mean? him and I love him to death, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I can't change his situation until I change my own situation. Right. Correct, there you, know you go. Right. There you go. So that's why I started what I'm doing now, you know what I mean? Riding horses and stuff so that... I ain't got to be out here selling drugs and robbing people to, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, trying to yeah. pay bills. Like, I sell horses. Yeah, you know that's I mean? heavy. That's heavy. When did yeah. you start with the horses? <coughs> How so, old were you? So I always had a passion for them as a kid because my people were from the country. Okay. You say the country where? Like Bay City. Okay. On 288 South, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I ended up moving back to Houston after I got kicked out of school in Bay City. Mm-hmm. And What you got kicked out for? I was a little fighter a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, you used to fight every now and then? I used to have to. They thought I was light-skinned. So they tried to pick on me. You oh, know so you was light skinned when you were lighter than what you are when you was younger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. With curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, like coming from that situation, I just wanted to to do something different, and I ended up running into a cousin of mine, the name Head. We was at the feast though, cause we used to fight dogs and shit. I'm like, man, cuz where you been? We ain't seen each other like six years. Shit, we ended up going to the barn. Damn, this shit cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, around some horses and shit. So we rode down the boulevard for the first time. Like, man, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And you've never ridden a horse at that time? Nah, I, I used to ride. Like, I knew how to ride, but I didn't really know. You know what I mean? I used to ride in the field with my uncle now. Okay. Versus, like, actually being controlling them on my own. Mm-hmm. So I started hanging with him, and shit, I started learning how to break horses. You know what I mean? And from How hard is it to break a horse? Because I watch a lot of Western and stuff like that. Because I love the fact when people find stallions and stuff like that. And, you know, they really can buck. Right. And you have to break that horse. Do you How really take them it? in the water and all that good stuff? If you have to. You There's certain them. ones that you got to do certain things, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you might get one. He, you might saddle him up. He might ride off. You might get one. You can't even get close to him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you just got to figure out how to get him to trust you. And that's the part of patience. How, how how long did it take you that one that I seen you getting out that truck and you you, you was messing with him? Uh, uh, how long did it take you to get him from there to you riding him and and, and roping it roping that calf with him? Oh, it took about I say about four months for four me to months. be able to start really roping on him like around the pen. How long did you stay around him all day? Like when you get up? Yeah, in the I was morning? wondering. Man, we spent hours. Like, I mean, did like, you take the weekends off or did you go out there like ain't daily? No, ain't no days off when you got horses. So you basically mm. dealt with him every day. Yeah. 
until y'all got to where and y'all. And four months. Yeah. When did you wow. see that breaking point with him where you felt like, oh, man, he, he, he you gave him to trust me? Probably by the third week. The third week? Yeah. Then why it took four months then if it's, it took the third week when he started trusting you? No, you nah. can't just jump on the ride. When, when, I say, when I say four months, I mean for me to be able to be roping, roping on him and like just take him out on the streets comfortably without him bucking and doing nothing crazy, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But as far as riding him, shit, I, I bought him in Lufkin. That's an eight-hour ride back to Houston. Mm-hmm. That wind whooped his ass. So when by the time we got back to Houston, I put a saddle on him, and it, he was rolled the first day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you rode him the first day? Yeah. Did he buck that day? I know yeah. he bucked. He you, bucked you got bit. thrown off? Nah, not that day. I ain't going to lie to you. It's the first <laughs> horse that bucked me off in like seven years. Because like I had a little thing by myself. Like I I can't be thrown. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the first day he didn't do it, but he do it another day. Why? You would think that the first day he would do that. Because he called me relaxed. <laughs> He know That's, you too, right? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And he was fresh. I had been feeding him good alfalfa and stuff. And next thing you know, shit, I saddle him up trying to. Well, really, I was out there with Jazz Prince and we was talking noise or whatever. <laughs> I say, man. I so say, he, I just saw broke you fe- you, he saw oh, you fell off man. of that horse. <laughs> I've never been thrown so hard. Mm-mm. This horse threw me in the air, made me do two flips, one going up and one coming down. Did you break anything? No, he knocked the wind say? out of my ass. He laughed. He laughed his ass. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> See, I, I laid there for a minute. He ran over there. You all right? Nigga? I say, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know, just to be able to 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 have that freedom, that peace. That's a peace, man. Yeah. To be is. able to, you know, it's like fishing. To be around horses and to be around, I know the feeling because I've been around stuff, but I never, I, I'm a country person, so I, I understand that that's a different type of lifestyle than a lot of people will ever experience. And that bond is real? Yeah. yeah. That you can have with yeah. that horse? Very real. Like it's they like, know you just the same way how you know. Him. Man, a horse gonna know you when you walk up. He gonna know your truck by the time y'all bond and all, like, they get to know who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's a special bond that you that you grow with that horse, especially if you train them yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never had the looks really to go buy a ten, fifteen thousand dollar horse. I always had to break my own. So mm-hmm. it, it's it, cheaper when you have to get a when you get a wild horse and break it. Yeah, it might be cheaper, but what it's gonna cost you if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like and I just had the luxury and and the drive that I wanted to learn more about these animals. So I I went way beyond where the people around my neighborhood was going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to obtain the knowledge to be one of the best of the best. Yeah. So I ended up buying a great horse, Bonnie Parker. That was, like, my baddest horse that I had at the, at the point in time. And what is a great horse? Like, it's the great color of the yeah, horse. Yeah, that's the color is of that, Is that, like, a like category of a horse? Like, what would you call that? That would be, like, the bomb horse? Like, like. Nah, it's just, it's just, like, color. You know what I mean? Like, you but some colors, but some colors go for more people like certain colors. Yeah. So where does that gray one fall in the category of? It fall in in the top four. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean, because you got Rones, you got Palominas, you got Dunes. Palominas is the one that I love. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you got Grays, Saws, Bays. It's all kind of different horses. You know what I mean? And your most common gonna be like your Saw or a Bay. Right. But your Grays and your Rones, if you got a good one, that's your money. Like mm. yeah, do you when they had Bun B had did all that at the rodeo? Was you there that night? Nah, I wasn't. What? Nah, nah. How you missed that, man? You gotta ride with the people that you you do both. So you rap and you rodeo. So that when I was actually at another rodeo out of town. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you like? Dang, I missed that one. But you knew you was gonna miss it. Yeah, I knew I was gonna miss it. Damn. But well, I ain't gonna miss it this year. <laughs> you ain't gonna miss it this year? Is it gonna be the same though? Like they gonna bring some artists in? Hopefully they got me up though. Hey! That's, that's true. <laughs> so, so I got, a, I got go one question about go horses. Ahead, I'll let you go. Is there still such a thing as wild horses out there? Like people can like find a wild horse that belongs to nobody and talk, roaming well, the, yeah. the valley and you can try to catch it? Yeah, like in the mountains and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like in the movies. Yeah, but I mean. I, it's not suggestible for you to go try to catch a wild horse like that. You know, unless you got a group or a crew that know what they're doing. Because <laughs> they usually go in with a herd. You yeah. might run into some wild hogs trying to find some wild oh, horses. You're you going to run into more than that. <laughs> like you don't want to be out there running in the wild Have you stuff? ever seen some oh, yeah. wild horses? I've been to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've been up to Utah. I've been a lot of places. You know what I mean? Uh, I go to Arizona a lot and rope with Lane Siggins and Cesar Delacruz. These are some pro guys. 
and they take me out on mountains and stuff and like you can actually see a bunch of wild mustangs just running through the through the wild you know what i mean you see, try to stay out that way though nah that yeah. would be that yeah. would be my goal is to catch one of them did she watch the movies, dog? <laughs> you end up just a movie. Just a movie. Did she in the movies right and there? Breaking. You got to know. Now her mind is in the movie. But, she but, see okay, it. But, but if what she's saying, it's not it's not impossible. You know but what I'm saying? But if you yeah. catch it, it, one and break him, how much would one of those worth compared to all these other horses? It all depends on the horse and how good he becomes and how much you value him. You okay. know what I mean? Like I bought a young horse that I'm riding now for like twenty five hundred dollars. You know what I mean? But he was wild. Mm. Like had never been touched, but now I want like twenty thousand for him. Mm. You know what I mean? You like, would depart, you sell it? Yeah, yeah. I flip. You all don't over. get att attached to these horses? I do, but shit. At the end of the day, you like your bread, it's a yeah. business. My bread come first. Already, mm. you know what I mean, I don't need no mayonnaise. I need the cheese and the bread. Let's talk about the music, <laughs> man. Like, like you, you, you different from all the other artists around you. I see you with. Slim Thug, I see you hanging out. I see you taking pictures with Jay Prince. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, where do you fit in this dynamic when it come down to the music? Man, what I've always preached on and been around, real gonna recognize real, and it's gonna always come together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just how we came together. Yes, you know? sir. Uh, but I've been around from from Jay Prince them for a long time. That's love. Yeah, you know I mean. Uh, me and Jazz, we got a brother-like relationship, you know what I mean? I taught him how to rodeo, how to rope, tie. He got fucking damn near $300,000 worth of horses in his barn right <laughs> he now. He love it. Yeah. And that's the cold part, because once you start something, it's just like anything else. You get attached and you start buying like cars, nigga. I'm going to get yeah. that one too. Yeah. I'm going to get that <laughs> one too. <laughs> got to have a bit. <laughs> so when you, I mean, did you, you and hit so he, he break them too or he don't break nah, them? Nah, 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 nah. He ain't like you. Nah, I mean, he, he can ride. He, he gonna rope, you know what I'm saying? But as far as breaking, that would be like my job. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Bro, I got you. You be watching it, watching to make sure everybody okay, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. How dangerous is it like like when you get out here at these different events and you do stuff? Because people can get hurt doing yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, it, it. like I say, um, it's all on the horse that you're riding, honestly. You know what I mean? Me, I wouldn't take you no know, any horse to you no know, any event for people to ride. You yeah, know what right. I mean? He gonna have to have uh, thousands of miles on him. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? From me riding him on different rides and Kids. doing different events on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but like, you know, I didn't seen people get hurt. I'd have been hurt myself. What's the worst injury you've seen? Somebody getting kicked in the head. Damn. Yeah. And they didn't die. Oh. Uh, it Might not, as well to be dead. It was, it was a lady. She was at a trail ride. Oh, she, a lady? Yeah, a woman. Yeah, she fell off her horse. And uh, and the horse came down. Her. The horse got spooked and kind of ran off. And when he ran off, he kicked her in the face. And he dislocated her whole face and knocked her eye out. Damn. Yeah. Did she get it fixed? That I, I didn't, didn't follow up yeah, on, but I it. seen the incident. But it happen. can do a lot. Horses yeah. are, how much does a horse weigh? Uh, anywhere from 800 to 1300 pounds yeah Dang. yeah so have you ever seen a horse that you know he his one his leg break you got to put him down yeah that's a sad occasion right there yeah, yeah. that's a cowboy move right there what do y'all do with leg got what broke, do you know what i'm saying dead horse do y'all bury him or do y'all let yeah. the vet come and pick him up nah, what happens uh, most likely like make some soap no you can't do that then <laughs> No, they gotta I'm, be, I'm just going they gotta, in. They got to be allowed to go to the soap factory. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Um, oh, you make soap out of... Oh, oh come on, man. Yeah. Not, that's oh. where it come from. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> you nah. just be lathering down with it. Don't even realize. <laughs> I'm just going to start using water from now on. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> nah, but uh, I, most of the time, you're going to bury them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, if you got a, a tractor or a backhoe at your place or something, you know what I mean? You go dig a hole for them. And, same, yeah, same process. Is there a horse cemetery somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> no, out in the wild blue yonder. <laughs> they out in the pastures, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay. so with, with the, going back to the music, I know she dove back in a little bit, but mm -hmm. going back into the music, man, I seen you with Slim Thug. I mean, have you ever did any music with any of these? Not yet. Uh, we've been in talking, you know what yeah. I mean, about doing some stuff. Uh, I actually got a new record out with Coke Ford. Okay. And okay. Cole Ford is big in the country rap world, you know what I mean? One of the originators. Yeah. Shout outs to him. How did y'all do that? How did y'all come up with it? Man, he heard a record that I just made and, you know, uh, Larry had kind of put it together. You know what I'm saying? What's the name of the song? Uh, Friday Night. 
Friday night. Yeah. What happens on Friday night? He, you got to Trying hear to have me a damn good time. <laughs> Already. Yeah, yeah. What kind of beers do a cowboy drink? All of them. Whatever. Any down. kind they get, they got over uh, around. Uh, yeah. Do you dip skull and all that no, stuff? No, no, no. Yeah, I thought no. all cowboys do that. No, nah, not all. Not all of them. And no. chew straw and stuff. No, 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 no. You know what? That's the TV stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm still me. You know. What I mean? <laughs> if, if, if you get where I'm so, going. So okay. So uh, you all cowboys. <laughs> supposed to be able to like if this world all electronics shut off everybody running around don't know how to survive in the wilderness you supposed to know how to do everything do you yeah me personally yeah but yeah. not not all of them do not all cowboys I ain't do. no damn cowboy but i'm gonna eat and have a good time i don't have to be no cowboy i'm country as hell we yeah. didn't that, have nothing that just come with survival skills yeah. oh, okay. I mean. just check it. hell no nah, i'm gonna yeah. make something to eat you'd be surprised what a person can do when he push <laughs> <Not for sure>. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised what everybody got in them when you push, push. it don't even have to be a country it'd be somebody up there to make they had a black dude in michigan that's so I think they say he made water out of air. Yeah, I saw that. Until they they got they messed his machines up and everything. It messed my head up. Yeah, like the I air just that. boom and then the water because came out. Because he's making some people lose money. That's right, why they messed right. it up. The black dude made water out of air, vaporized, boom. Yeah, you got a bottle of water. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I didn't. I, I had to. I had to look it up. Somebody sent it to me. I couldn't believe it. I said, "Hell, it's all right here." And then you know, I think, yeah, yeah, the water started. You know, people don't buy water no more. So guess what? They got him out of there. Mm -hmm. I'm being real. People don't want to hear that. They're not trying to get it. You just mess up these water sales for them. That's, they took them a long time to fool y'all into thinking y'all needed water out of a bottle. Mm. <laughs> so, so hold on, cause we jumped into the um, the rap, but you didn't tell us why you got into the rap. Cause you were doing doing the horse. How old were you when you said, "Okay, I'm going, I'm going rap." Uh, so the music, I kind of been back and forth with it my whole life. Okay, but I never really took it serious. Everybody, used, I used to freestyle around the table like with. Say a few bars here and there. They were like, man, why you don't go make a song about horses? Mm -hmm. So I finally did. And uh, at that time, my brother had got locked up. My brother in the feds for 22 years. Mm. Wow. And he was actually the rapper. You know what I mean? Like, this was his dream. So for me to help him, you know what I'm saying, live out his legacy, like, I started 22 rapping. years. How yeah. long he's been in there now? Uh, he's been in there about four years now. So when he first, when this first happened, how did it affect you? It's I your mean, brother. It, it it really hit me being the time that he had this time, but like my brother been back and forth and yeah. out of jail, you know what I'm saying, my Street. whole life. You know what I mean? So, but when he got this time, it was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, he younger, older. He older. Did he have any music out before he left? He was working on dropping it, but he had get to drop it. Man, my brother had probably 300 songs just ready to go. You don't ever do something with him, remix or do anything. Yeah, was, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Man. So you can so he can push it out. If he ever get off lockdown and I'm in the studio whenever he call, we can put No, I'm down. talking his, so he has to do that. I'm talking like his music, music that he, he already, he already have. With. Can't you remix it and you jump on there like a feature and then so you can push it? Do you it have out? access to Them it? Them files gone with that phone. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, when it all went down, it was a, it mm. went down. Yeah. You know, when it go down, they go to taking people electronics around this home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Um, well, like I said, with you and you, you, you see Slim, you see Lil Kiki. Who would you want to work with to, to cross that music over with the country rap to, to that you feel like it would sound good? As far as out of Sl Slim and Kiki? Not just Slim and Kiki. You got all kind of people, a litany of people over there. Chose, you got, you got Sauce Walker, you got all type of people. You got a lot of people to pick from in Houston. Uh, or, or just period. Uh, Yellow Beats and Mike would even do one, which he sound country Man, already. Bro, I'm, I'm really <laughs> open to working with all them guys. You know what I mean? Like, I want to do some with Chos because he's actually tapping into that market and he's right. from the country. Right. He's from Brookshire, Texas. You know so what I'm saying? You'd like, like to do something with DJ Cho? For sure, for sure. Have you ever rocked out with him and talked about it? Man, we didn't We didn't talk to shows like probably like two years ago when I first started, you know what I mean? But like since I didn't kind of grew my fan base, we hadn't really got back in touch with each other. It's going to happen. But me and Slim, uh, we've been kind of in contact, you know what I'm saying? We're going to work on something with this H-Town Boy Like Me remix and... I'm trying to get Slim on the show. I had never interviewed him yet. Yeah. But it's coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. It's time. I'm working, man. You. But I'm working, man. I'm working to make sure they understand, hey, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy Boss Talk 101 is in the building. Yeah. So, but, oh, go ahead. No, you go. 
No, I would, so I'm curious, but in order for me to ask these questions, I'd like to bring up um, Larry. What up, Larry? Hey, man, guess who in the building, man? Hey, y'all seen him on here before, man. He's here, man. Larry Hoover Jr. is in the building. Yes, sir. Boy, I know how to intro him, boy. You know, I should have been on back in the days. I should have been bringing out Prices Right. Uh, what's that, <laughs> up, boy? Here's Johnny. Johnny, I could have brought out Johnny. I could have brought out, uh, what's that name, bad boy? Dun, 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 dun. That was Prices Right. What was his name? Bob, Bob Barker. Barker. <laughs> I could have brought out Bob back in the days, man. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just sound too black, don't I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, Larry? Man, I'm all right. How you doing? Oh, no. We got to get you right. Uh, you, uh, now, you didn't tell me how you doing. Say that again. That's... I said, I'm all right. How you doing? <laughs> that sounds a little better. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm doing all right, man. Just happy to have you, man. Back in Texas, man. Do you make that trip a lot? Yeah, I'll come here quite often. Yeah, that's that's it's just good to have you, man. Hey, I've been coming here for a long time too. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It's got, I'm glad that we we started we got Boss that, Talk. Yeah, we got in that Boss circle. Talk One Hundred and One jumped off, and man, me and me and Larry Hoover Jr. I just bam, like this is my guy. Like what? Yeah. Something I'm gonna check on him. That's just some people. Now I deal with a lot of people, but it's one or two of them. I'm gonna be like, man, where you at? What you got going? It's gonna be a nose at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> just want to make sure everybody good. Yeah. So the question I wanted to know is, how did you link up with Larry? How did y'all, you know, get connected and got into the music together? Good question. So uh, I had kind of been around Larry, you know, what I mean, a while, but with without directly being around him. Okay. You know, Explain. Through my brother. Your you know brother? I mean? Like, he would always tell me about, you know what I mean, bro and mama, and he was like, uh, man, you need to make the connection. Mm -hmm. So, I was with um, Jazz Prince at a, a, a ride at Turkey Leg Hut with Lynn. Oh, okay. And ended up running to Larry and Shanique, and he, he heard my music. But this is the part you'll understand. Okay. That's the Turkey Leg Hut. It's a vegan barbecue spot. Ah. So I was at the vegan barbecue spot, and there was some people back there with the horses. Oh, okay. Then he so you were trying to be nosy and went back there looking. I mean, I'm just looking around. I seen <laughs> I seen Jazz out there, okay. and I guess Jazz said that's you know what I mean that's me, and he uh -huh. came and spoke to me, and okay. somehow he lured me over to the truck and played some of his music, and I'm like, man, this is different. Mm -hmm. I like this though. I don't even know how to categorize it because it's right. something I ain't never heard. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there like. Man, I think I should, I can do something with this. Maybe right. get it to some people to you know get right. it where it need to be. See if we can't do something. And I just um you know said said let's see if we can do something. And he like let's see let's talk about it. Okay. Yeah. But okay, indirectly we was around each other because I knew his brother. I didn't know him yet. Right. And then when I met him at that point, I didn't know that that, that was his were, brother. Right. That's what yeah. I was wondering. He didn't never say because you didn't know that. Well, you knew at the time that your brother knew him, but you didn't. Bring up his name during that time to say, "Hey, I'm such and such brother." Yeah. Okay, so when did you find out? Later on that day. Oh, that same day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you a question. So you manage him? Yes. Okay. So is he your first artist? Nah. No. No. I, I had artists years ago. Okay. We had a label a long time ago. We didn't um, we didn't go far with it. Okay. You what, know what happened? We didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> but it's trial and error. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, I love the fact that you said that because there are a lot of people who jump up and want to start a label because they find somebody who is a gem. And what exactly should a person know that's starting a label? Like, because you've had trial and error during your time, so what can we learn from what you know? Patience. Yeah, it's going to take patience. You need to, you know... Get all your ducks in a row as far as your paperwork and your affairs when mm -hmm. you're doing your business and all. Um, it's going to take a couple dollars, and the less money you had, the longer it's going to take. Oh, that's true. And we going the slow route. <laughs> <laughs> but I would always think that the determination and being in the right rooms can also outweigh that dollar sometime. Hey, that's the blessing we have. <laughs> See? We, we know a few people, you know what I mean? Yeah, because then if you're put in the right place and people hear your vision and hear the talent, they'll be like, okay, well, I'm willing to, you know, mm -hmm. whether invest or help or, you know, put you in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. So how long have y'all been working together? A uh, year and a half, almost two years now. 
Wow. Yeah. How has he been doing? Oh, he great. Yeah, <laughs> he he didn't. He really helped me out a lot. You know what I mean? As far as even on a personal scale, just through life, because like I knew I had the talent, and I knew like damn, I should be in them rooms with these people. And like, bro, you gotta be patient. God got something for you that right. you can't see yet. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. And me just being hard headed, like, nah, bro, I'm ready to go now. Like, I need to be up there. And uh, it's just like the embracement that he gave me is like, it's, it's, it's more literature and, and helpful for me in the future and long run because I wanted to run a race instead of running a marathon. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I got music that should be around for the rest of my life. This ain't just gonna be here for this year. But how did you learn that? Because I'm sure that. Just like how you said you were stubborn and hard-headed. At first, you don't get like that. You know what I mean? It takes time. But what happened? You know, what did he say to you? How did he get through to you? Because a lot of times managers and artists bump head because you want it done one way and he wants it done one way. Y'all don't ever see the same way. It's called faith and belief in God. You know what I mean? And and he always preached that to me. Like, you got to have faith. That's good. And understand, like, Larry is a... As a phenomenal dude, like especially helping you to understand things. Yeah, you know I mean, and my understanding was a little fucked up at the point in time. And being that we've been growing together, mm-hmm. I got a lot more understanding. I worked on my attitude, and I got gratitude now. You know what I mean? So I it, it made me a lot more humble and understanding that Jay Brown gonna be Jay Brown regardless. Mm-hmm. But Jay Brown has to have patience mm-hmm. in order to grow to be that superstar that. Everybody sees that he can be. You know what I mean? You can't get nowhere with a bad attitude. What's your goal for yourself in the next, I want to say, by next year? Because it's about to be 2023 in a minute. <clears throat> goal for next year, I, I want to... Um, because you see the pace that y'all been taking for two years now. What do you expect for 2023? This next project is mm-hmm. like, I think it's phenomenal. And uh, What's the name of it? You know it? I haven't. Uh, Got named a name it. yet? Nah, I was going to call it Billy the Kid, but I'm going to wait on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of up in the air. Because, like, Billy the Kid being, like, I came and stole the rap game. Right. You know what I mean? And the country lane at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, but I hadn't really just, just finalized the decision yet. But this next, like, my single with Code Ford, this is, like, one of the most phenomenal records that I think I've done. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, that's every artist. Every artist always think that their newest Project is always their best. Yeah, but I. What I, makes this one so special? <laughs> I, I did myself. You outdid yourself. You surprised. Yeah. How many songs are you gonna have on this project? Uh, I'm gonna have ten songs on that project. How many have you already done? You you finished all of them already? Man, he got projects. I got a hundred songs in this phone already. Right now. <laughs> so <laughs> he can, he keep making music. Yeah. You can make projects off of what he got already, or. Take the new stuff. Just keep going. But you know how artists be like, no, these right here, it's just not the time for these. These are, I've heard that so many times. I'm like, it's good. Why haven't you put it out? No, it's not the time yet. And they've been trying to explain to me, it's like, this depends on the, what's in style of what people are talking about. You can't put something out that is not relevant right now, so to say, or people not going to gravitate to it. That's what they've told me. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that to be true? Kind of, sort of. Some people make cult, for, cult followings with just their style of music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With what they bring to the table. You got people that have whole audiences that is not listening to whatever these people feel like is it right now. So it, it just depends. Mm-hmm. You know, we in a we can be in either world. We kind of we kind of in a weird space, but it's good. What? Would you do? Hold on, one more. Would you do both rap and country? That's what I'm doing. It is. That's what oh, he's okay. doing. But yeah. I was still asking about this rock and roll country st- side, side that y'all trying to get into. Yeah. What's going on with that? Man, it's it's working. Talk to me about it. So I got this new record with Cole for Friday night. Okay. Oh, uh, I did myself to be honest with you, because normally I'm rapping. Like I do a little harmonizing, you know what I mean. But this one here is it's like actually country, and it's a good feel for everybody across the world. It's not just for one group of people, you know what I mean. Like it ain't just for rodeo people. It ain't just for the urban. It's it's a feel good song that everybody can go out on Friday night and get drunk and have fun on. Wow, you know what I mean? that's the one go thing I love about country. And go cow tipping. 
<laughs> you, can you can go parking lot pimping. You can see, do that. Do people that. I'm a count I'm a, con- I'm a country boy. See, yeah. is that see, real? I didn't know yeah. when I when yeah. I hit no. him. With, no, I'm when like I, when I hit him with that, they didn't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't know about cow tip. Why yeah. would people cow tip? Because yeah. you walk out on the cow. Now he sleeps at night, and you get close. Have to you him. ever cow tip? I'm a country boy. See. See, you got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? See, that you're cow learning. is heavy. How hey, y'all hey, tip hey, over hey, that cow? Hey, hey, hey. You just have to be there to see it. See, I it told takes, you I was country. You tried to play me in the, I oh, think, he ain't country. I yeah. think you just I saw it in the movies. I go there and you like mess you up. Yeah. Now, you ain't seen that in just, no movie. I seen it in the movies. Nah, you did? No, yes, not me. Not me. I ain't going to lie. I, I did not see it in the movie. I experienced it. <laughs> in real life. In real life. <laughs> How many people does it take to tip a cow? Oh, man, you, you you can do it. You just got to read. Go out there. You need to go no. out there and do it. Answer the question, then, since you know. Yeah. Answer the question. I, well, How many people? Well, I'll show you one night. See, he, he still don't want to answer. If you're a real cowboy, it only take one. You there, and your horse. There you go. But I'm just saying, I take you out there one night. We ain't use no horse. Me and you. I don't care. <laughs> no. I do it. <laughs> You go run with them to push the cow. <laughs> you can experience things at least only once and say you did it. Right. Wow. So, hey, I'm Peter, go be at the front though. <laughs> <laughs> say, man. So, uh, uh, them old bulls. I took my wife one night and we. She made me go. She forced me into the, some forward spot, stockyard. Forward stockyard. We out there. Because I wanted getting, to go to the rodeo, and but we they didn't. They it. didn't have the rodeo that night, so I didn't get to go. They have a Friday and Saturday over there. See, I didn't know that we only end up seeing them, you know, do the the cows. Roping. I mean, the the bulls. That yeah, roping. That was it. I loved it. I'm sorry. I loved it. He hated um, it. I didn't hate it. It's just on a Friday night. I got something else I got to do. Right, right. Let me tell you, we are totally different, but really? we're the same. Like I will go hiking. He will not. He will like. Give me a bike or a motorcycle. No, you know what he'll no, tell me? No. no, he'll tell me. Oh, that's the white side of you coming out. No, I'm gonna be real <laughs> with you. I go hiking if it's on my land. Like back in the days when we used to be on your land and you just going and walking through the woods and when I was and when I was younger, it's ours. But just hiking through something that I don't belong to me don't. Yeah, I want to go right. camping. You know I want to go mean? hiking. That I want to do all of that. I, mean, I, I can't say that because I didn't. I didn't been hiking. I didn't. You been, like to hike? I didn't been camping. Hiking. It looked like it'd be cooler to just ho- ride horses through. You know, just through like long ways like they did on on movies. You That's know? how I feel. I, I want to do yeah. all of it. I don't just think I want to go walk I think you're six right. miles up. up yeah, up I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> nah. You like you like them old drones? I, I'd rather fly a drone up there and bring him back, and I'm good. And you can see what you did. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no, no, no. When, when you say hiking. <laughs> Take a good look at it from Yeah, yeah. and bring it back. And no, I don't want to walk cool. through a field. I just, just drive me to the mountain bottom and let me climb up and then come back down. What? Really? Yeah. Let me I want to talk about hike up the mountain to climb up the mountain. Which one? Hike up. Okay, hike, not climb. It's I both called a climb, but it's yeah. an actual climb and it's a. That's right. Yeah, I do both. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you really, uh, really gonna, uh, 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 you gonna take this thing to a whole other level when it come down to, uh, you know, country rap. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah, it ain't. I'm gonna go the biggest that we can get, man. I like it. Like I'm, I'm trying to get to the top with Jelly Roll and struggle and yeah, you know what I mean. The Jason Aldeans, the Lee Bryces, and I you know love what I mean. Jason. Even, even probably do a record with like Breland or somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like that'd be dope. You, you serious about it? Ain't no turning back now. Nah, you all I, the way in too I'm deep. Too far in. I like it. I like so, it. Uh, you know, Mind I asked up. him. I asked him everything about himself. So Larry, what do you, what do you expect from him? In the next year, because he told me what he expect, but what do you expect from him? Just nothing but growth. It's always that's all we're looking for is growth. Just keep growing, bigger and bigger, further and further. Wow! So when you think about just uh, when uh, I heard you doing shout outs now, what you got going on? Doing shout outs? Some of those. Oh, you talking about on cameo? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm on cam- I'm on cameo, man. I'm oh yeah, sending out happy birthdays and happy anniversary and you know whatever else. Positivity. Yeah, positivity. positivity. They might want me to say something a little crazy. I don't know. They might want me to. Call a friend and say, "How you stinking ass doing?" Happy to see you. <laughs> so, what do you? Uh, I mean, let me ask you this too, man. How's your dad doing? Man, he's doing good. He's on um, uh, eternal optimist. Okay, you know what I mean. So he, um, we just waiting to get a response on 
the the last thing we turned in. Okay, okay, that's dope. I just had to ask about him because you know we've talked about him so many times on on the platform, and I know the people watch. So just to know that he's okay, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. To know he's, that you guys, you know, he hanging in there. That's a, that's big. He's strong. Still fighting. He my my fighting. daddy used to tell me, man, I'm tough. Even to the day he died, that's what he told me. Even to the day he, you know, when he had that surgery and he didn't make it through. Man, I'm tough, or you know, it, it was always that. So it's something about your dad and, and being able to. You got your dad, man. It, no matter what the situation may be, you still got your dad. That's yeah. B. That's, yeah. B, that's huge. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So um, do he be working out in there? No, at this point he don't do much don't working do out. He used much. to, you know, do a bunch of jumping jacks and push ups and stuff. But he's 72. Okay. That don't matter. My mama's 75. 76. 76. 76. Don't she, she, she working out. She, yeah, be, yeah, she, she get up and, and she walk and she do her little exercise. She be on the ground doing, trying to do some ab crunches and stuff. Yeah, but no, he don't do much working out anymore. <laughs> he used to. <laughs> no, you got to try to stay fit. You got yeah. to. So, um, you know, like I said, you, 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 um, Anytime you look around, you look at these different situations going on. We've been seeing your friend Kanye. Now, that's your boy. Because I've seen y'all, you know what I'm saying, on Drink Champs together. I got yeah. to bring this up. But, yeah. uh, it's a lot going on with Kanye right now. You know, uh, you my link to Kanye, so I get to talk to you. You Not know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think when you see all the different things going on, the antics that, that whether he said or whether people are talking, what do you think about that? You know, I don't know where he's going with everything that he's doing, but, you know, everybody's entitled to an opinion and their point of view on how they want to um, how they want to go about things. I don't mm -hmm. have to agree with everything that he does. You know, that's just how it is with humans. I might not agree with everything you do, and you might not agree with everything I do, but, you know, still, lots, I, I love Kanye, Man, regardless, you, you know? You yeah. for, him, for you and him, in a way, I didn't mean to cut you off, for, for what, what you guys experienced together, you can never not love Kanye. Mm -hmm. To be be the type of dude to go to bat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and to say the things that he said on, in your father's behalf and just family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, you don't you don't turn your back on stuff like that from my point of view. But you know, some people do. Some people got different ways of looking at things for popularity. But I I, I got a heart, man. My mm -hmm. heart it, it it really is real. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. So hey, I, I love I love I love seeing Kanye in that in that lucrative uh, position. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that he, and to be able to say whatever. I, of course, you know, yeah, you might not agree with everything, but to be able to say whatever you would like to say. Some people would not be able to say some of the things that right. he said and not be pushed to a point where you can't even, you wouldn't even. Blackball you. You wouldn't really. even see him no more. But right. I don't think Kanye is that blackballable. <laughs> when you look at the financial standpoint of Kanye, yeah, where's man? But I'm definitely always praying for him, and I know, I know you, I know he'll be okay. See, I keep watching because I keep thinking that you know how people do things because they have something else planned. There's an ultimate motive to what you're doing, mm -hmm. and I keep looking. I'm like, okay, I know something's coming up. I'm like, have to be something coming up. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Do you think it's something coming up, or you think that he just just talking his mind? You know what I. I just sit back and see what and see what happened. I'm not even trying to figure it out. Not trying to figure <laughs> it out. I'm just go, you know, let him do what he do. That's the best thing to do. That's wild, and and, and the reason is wild because he's helped a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, we can't people. deny that. He's helped a lot of people, and a lot of times I'm gonna tell you something. You can do. I heard Powell Wow say this. You can do. it. A hundred and one things for people, two, three hundred things for people. But, but you turn around and that one, one thing that you thing. do that somebody don't like, they forget about all three hundred mm -hmm. of the things that you did that was cool. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. forget about the cool three hundred. That's how it works. And they mm -hmm. only focus on the one thing. I heard Power I say something like that, and I, I was like, he's so right, and I'm pretty sure that they experience this stuff. You guys experience this stuff when people, you know, they depend on you and they want you to do this or that, and you don't do it. They don't care a family hell with you too. Them the, them the ones. I love my family because I know they gonna give it to me raw. Mm -hmm. That'll make you better too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> my kids, damn, they man, they want what they want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when they want it. And now they don't, they still love you, but you messing up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so um, just um, man, thank you so much, man. Uh, it, it's crazy, Jay, that you uh, you in this world win, man. And I'm gonna be riding with you. I appreciate it, bro. I might have to come down there and get you to. Uh, I ain't been on a horse in years. 
I might have to come down there. I want to go riding. And yeah, I might have to come down there, me and Miss Jamaica, and ride and do an interview with you on them sure. horses. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Get me one that's broken real good. <laughs> I, don't don't need him to be, I don't need him to be spooked or not. Are you going to bring him up here? I got a couple of partners up here that got some horses, and I bring mine up here. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. we'll ride out, and we'll talk, and I'll have a camera guy to ride with us. He might not like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might put him on a gator or something, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah. way yeah. he can just record and get his angles the yeah. way he want to, man. Because sure. that'll be live, because I ain't done nothing like that. I like to do new stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. That'll be hard. Let's, let's make it happen Already So man. would you give me A little bit of One of your songs Oh yeah Hold on before you do that Now you know I told you If this happened What we gonna need to do <laughs> What's going on He gotta give you Something country And then he gotta give you Something ghetto country Right Okay You know what I mean So he, I need a little bit of both gotta give him a little That's something That's fine So uh, This I'm gonna start out with Do you want a beat Or you want Just acapella I mean, I'll just do it like a fellow. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we're going to start off with Friday night. All right. Had it out on Friday night, trying to have me a damn good time. This old school Chevrolet never let me down. Take a shot straight out of a bottle, need another round. Ain't got to wake up in the morning, we going to turn this place out. God damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, uh, like yeah, that. man. And you don't even sound uh, nothing yeah, like how you sing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, all. man. Yeah. Yes, then, sir. Uh, we, hey, it's going down. So uh, then I come back with, like, Stock Show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just rode a $50,000 horse at the Stock Show. Probably fuck a bad bitch at every rodeo. They been hating on the kid, but they don't want smoke. You can pick your choice of poison, a head or foe. I'ma rope my calves, I'ma talk my shit. I'm a self-made player, I ain't worried about a bitch. Pull up at the trail ride, who you with in the mix? Yeah, I'm country, but I'm ignorant, so don't never get it twisted. Hey, there yeah, it I is. like that. Oh, I gotta ask you about just the visuals on some of the songs that you've already created and what inspired those things. So let's talk about let's do a rundown of some of the stuff that you've enjoyed making as far as the visuals. Give me your favorite. Uh as far as visual wise, um I, I do this stuff just off of my real life. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So whatever you hear me rapping about is what I'm doing in real life. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm putting my, I'm gonna paint the picture Exactly how it's going You know what I mean Like from From the trail ride stuff With the $50,000 horse Like I was telling you About Bonnie Parker mm -hmm. I bought the horse For $4,000 At the end of the deal But I sold it for Like 30 mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying So It wasn't that she Was actually worth 50000 But in my eyes I felt she was A $50,000 horse you know what I mean? Just like if, if you got a Frenchie or something, he right. might not be about the twenty five hundred dollars at all. Mm -hmm. But I want ten thousand for him. I got a ten thousand dollar Frenchie. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's the same thing with this. So like when I came with the music part of it, it's just like I'm embracing my lifestyle because I wasn't able to buy them horses. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I used to see people going buy horses five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. I'm like, damn. So that's what made me start training them. You know, they're what not saying? cheap at all. No, they're me, expensive. Let's talk about B smoke. Cowboy <laughs> Boss, I'm a beast, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, you like that, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about it. So, uh, that shoot there, it came just off of some raw stuff. My partner called me. He was like, hey, man, you need a vi video of that song. I'm like, man, shit, just meet me at the barn. Heavy. I, I'm at the barn, you know what I'm saying? And shit. I had that wrong horse, and that's who I'm talking about in this song. You know what I'm saying? That little wrong motherfucker really get it on. Yeah. I hang with the greatest, it ain't no debate, and keep me a dodge in heavy rotation. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that right there, that was a, a monument for me because, like, at that point in time, like Larry said, you know what I'm saying, I was trying to grow because I was in a dark place with music, you know what I'm uh, saying? Like, I was like, man, is this shit going to work or do I just need to goddamn keep selling horses, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? I think everybody's been, everybody in been music there, right? has been there, done that, yeah. where they doubted because it wasn't going fast enough. Usually that's what usually cause it. Right. You know, you feel like you're giving out your all, but it just ain't, your dream not happening. Yeah, I mean it was happening, but when you sitting when you sitting back and like you don't really have that emotion that you was having, you know what I'm saying? Like because because the shows or this or that, my fan base ain't even really in Texas. Mm. Where's your fan base? All over. Mm. Like it's mainly in country parts, you know what I'm saying? Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Wow. You know what I mean? Like they love like my first time leaving Houston. I went to uh, Port Gibson, Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? And Dead Eye brought me out there for a rodeo. 
my first time away from here, they had me perform, and they had me match rope a dude. Because they didn't think I was about what I was talking about. Mm. I whooped his ass. Drove out there by <laughs> myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Put that rope on him and then perform. Uh, but, like, as far as fan base, man, like, I, I've been... I've been able to reach out in Brazil. I've been in New Zealand, like a lot of different. Wow. Uh, when I look at my Apple playlist and Spotify, I'm in 51 different countries. Mm-hmm. And That's all heavy. 50 states. You know what I mean? No promotion. Rodeo Cowboy, let's talk about it. Oh, uh, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I heard the Shabuzi track. Okay. And uh, I was like, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't real cowboy shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, it, it was kind of like the. Lil Nas X type deal to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, ain't no gimmick with me. So, anytime I hear something, I'm going to step on it the real way and the cowboy way. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm a rodeo cowboy. You know what I'm saying? That was like, I wanted to show the world who I am and what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Because everybody was saying that I needed to commercialize stuff. I was like, all right, I'm going to go this way with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of saying bitch ho and this and that. You know what I'm saying? Just being a raw meat uncut. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and just step it up just to snap. You know what I mean? And that's how Rodeo Cowboy came about. What about Cowboy Dream? Let's keep them going. <laughs> that's for all the young niggas in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a, I got a squad of young niggas back home that all they listen to is Jay Brown. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They riding through the hood on their horses. Riding in they trucks, you know what I'm saying? Second, third gen Dodgers. That's how we ride down south, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. It was just one of them, like, to let niggas know that you can make it out this situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I came from the same streets y'all came from. Only difference is I grind every day to make it to where I'm trying to go. You know what I'm saying? I never give up, and that's part of Cowboys, like, never giving up. Cowboy dream. Yeah. I had a dream, and... Shit, I was a cowboy with it, you know what I mean? And what about Cross Pass? Man, that, that record there, it, it came about, uh, shout out to E-Digital, that was the producer on that. Um, he came to the house, like, first time I met him, and he had some beats. It was like, uh, man, what you think about this? He popped it on, put the headphones on, and I just started going, you know what I mean? And that record there, it was just basically let you know how I'm coming. Already, you know what I mean. Throw my feet across the saddle, how I came up. Ride rank across the pasture, trying to get it done. Hey, I'm just a cowboy drinking on the good stuff. Then drove a whole lot of miles just to miss one. Yeah, like if you have a rodeo and you done drove over a hundred miles, two hundred miles to a rodeo, and ain't kid shit, you gonna understand that. You know what I mean? Like I drove a whole lot of miles just to miss one. That's for five thousand, for five hundred, whatever the prize was on that. That's a long way back home when them <laughs> niggas laughing at oh, your no, ass, that's, you know that's, what I'm saying? Like, hey, all them rides when something don't go your way be long anyway. Yeah. I've been on them. Hmm. Man, I, I, like I said, I like to talk about the music because, like I said, I'm, I'm more of a, a person who intrigued by sound. You know, love the music, country, uh, um, rap, uh, soul, uh, uh, yeah, a lot, just all of it, man. Right. I, I like to get to it, man. Right. I like a little uh, 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 funk. No, you don't know about that though, man. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest with you. You, you don't know about no to phone, a little bit of that. What? Larry and Mike up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my first time meeting Mike. Uh, I'm backstage with him, and man, he had that phone on. It was going down, wasn't it? I mean, it was just something different, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I'm back here vibing with Mike Ills, but I gotta listen to this phone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it it actually opened my mind up to a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Sounds and. You know, I'm a, I'm a music kind of so I love to to take the music in and try to make something different out of it, whether it be country, rock, pop, you know what I mean, rap, whatever it is. My cowboy hat. Man. <laughs> you know, you got a hat on right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying Let's to see talk which one about of these yeah, ladies yeah. going to wear my cowboy hat. My cowboy hat. Right. So you sat there and wrote my cowboy hat. Man, so What's that, the process, man? Honestly... It's all the vibes that's around me. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, I always got the cowboy method as far as with the music. You know what I mean? Shit, it might be me and Larry in the room. You know what I'm saying? And I'm coming up with a record and we just chopping it up. He might have an idea, you know what I'm saying? But he don't know how to actually give it to me. Mm-hmm. But I can listen and, okay, we put that together. But on the, my cowboy hat record, uh, I was working with a guy named Louie. And 
man, that dude there, like, as far as production, he's phenomenal, you know what I'm saying? And I looked up to this guy, Laser. He's one of the biggest writers in the game, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Laser. I told him about the record. I was like, hey, bro, I got this song, my cowboy hat, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't know which way to go with it. Like, man, go genuine with it. So that's how I brought the, you know what I'm saying? Live. I took Pony, you know what I'm saying? Told Louie about it and shit, we made the record. Come up with that shit like. like Hold on, when well, you say you go genuine with it, because when I think about genuine, I'm thinking about. You think about that, the, the dance he the, doing in. No, I, the, the dance, <laughs> the shirt off, the going in. It don't look the same no more. He doing that dance I mean, and it's viral right now. So did you go genuine like that? <laughs> so that video isn't out yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, are you going to go genuine like that? Most definitely. Oh, okay. Most definitely. I've been I in the gym, check. so. I, I've been in the gym, been so in the gym. we get, get right, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Don't drop that, yeah. You know, um, yeah, yeah, I get it, man. So, uh, Larry, man, uh, what's the name of that restaurant you you had me and my wife? We ate those them lambs in up there. Oh, S two. What is it? S two. S two. Shout out to S two Express, man. Y'all appreciate y'all for letting us in, man. We got in there, and man, I'm coming back to Chicago for some it of them lamb, good. man. It's going down, man. I'll be back. He be talking <laughs> about that lamb all the time. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got to get back up there. Coming back. It, it's gonna be too cold in a minute, though. And I'm not coming up there in no cold. I'm telling you. No, it's gonna man, be get something to do that. Get your coat some long johns, man. Yeah, do it. Ice that thick on the water. Maybe that thick. Y'all wild up there. I've seen it, man. Man, we've been getting some crazy weather here the past few. Years old. Yeah, I know it, but man, I like Chicago, Not man. They had a negative 40. We was at 14. I said a negative 40, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, now that's something different. So, <laughs> so do you do you feel like 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 Larry, you know, um, what do you think about where music is right now? Like, like, you know, um, is it you got J. Cole's, you got all these different people, you got uh, the Kanye's, the the Jay Z's, the, the the all the different people you got, all these different people doing their thing, man. Wh how do you look at music now compared to you know maybe maybe a few years back, ten years ago? Man, I used to see it as um, I like I like the music, I like some of the artists. I just don't like the fact that um, life is imitating art. You know what I mean? Okay. I, if the music was just looked at as art and it was a story or a visual or a, a, a um, movie to your ears, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And people didn't take it as so little. a blueprint to follow as yeah. far as what goes on in life when they talk about getting high and blase skipping. And I understand this stuff go happen without music, but it seemed like it was kind of, when I got a son that's 15, you know, it's just, it's just kind of hard to get into it when... He's saying all type of crazy stuff to me, thinking it's funny because it of the stuff he's listening to yeah. off of the music. Yeah. So I just be looking for something a little different. Some, you know, just some good time, feel good music, or for them to, you know, they got the, they had a microphone mm -hmm. to send a better message. They can pull people together, but they don't do that. It's they all don't. about separation and do it's this, bad. do that. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I just wish it was more bringing people together or, Hey man, this is art. This is real. This is not a way to live life or more messages on if it go this way, what's going to happen? You know? And also just that it, you don't have to do it this way. You know, right now the drill music, I think is driving mm -hmm. driving the car a lot of times. And I say that to say like when you look back when we when rap first hit the scene, yeah, you was going to get some too short and then you might get some uh, 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 you know, my name is D Nice, or you might get some special ed. This Mixed is before your time. Of, there's a but lot of then different. you're gonna have some uh, uh, some Jodeci, or you might have some some. See, there are some R and B albums coming in the midst of that. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You're gonna have some. You might have some uh, Jagged Edge or something hit in there, right. or you might have some uh, 112. So it, we had a relaxation time in there. You know, we got the slow dance. You know, we drag y'all two step if you really country. <laughs> Cowboy, like you, like you have a two step. Nah, I can't zide a call two step. But yeah, okay, but you, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we had a breaking point. You know that we would stop for a break. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know we might run it, man, but then we'll stop and we slow dance with the, with to uh, uh uh keep sweat. You might you know you might be young, but you're ready and uh uh you know all that stuff. Right. 
But that's the difference in what we got today. Now today they driving and it's straight. Uh, you know, as soon as somebody get killed, they 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 gonna celebrate. They gonna talk about the, there's a nigga coming out. I don't know if he is enemy, is op or what, but he coming. Yeah, he coming. I didn't know, I did not know this was a new thing till I seen four or five people die, seven eight people die and every time this person die, and they got this from Chicago. To be honest with you. It was a Chicago thing first. This is where it started from what I'm hearing. And and as soon as somebody died, boom, people start talking crazy about that person. They jump right online. That is yeah. the weirdest thing to me. Yeah, it's real weird. I've never I, I never would have thought. But this is something that happens. I'm telling you, I'm just speaking facts. You know what I'm saying? I'm no, speaking no, it's a, what I see. Nah, yeah, it's, it's, it's like crazy it's crazy. It don't make no sense at all. Be real. That's that's why I do what I do. You know what it's I'm saying? Like, that's good. Because I come from that ethnicity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From, I grew up in the same spots these dudes grew up in. But what am I going to keep glorifying in the streets for? You know what I'm saying? Like when it ain't doing nothing but sending all our brothers out the household mm -hmm. to prison and to, and to jail. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like Growing up, I, I had over 100 partners before the time I was 21 that died. That's crazy. And the thing that I hate about that is that, you know, I've seen so many people who sit in the seat who've been to prison for years, and they've always said, you know, my mama raised me. My mama is my heart. My mama is this. But yet you do all this crazy stuff to leave your mama yeah. and give her all this heartache and pain. How, how can you love her if you're doing all this stuff? They don't understand that until they end up. You know what I'm saying? They, it's like... Oh, I'm a man. I'm out here. I'm doing this and that. You know what I'm saying? But not understanding that is not grown man shit. That's little boy shit. You know what I mean? To keep doing the same shit that you seen the next man doing instead of trying to actually educate yourself and do something different. Mm -hmm. Like, with me, I ride horses, train them. I drive hot shot, and I do music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a bunch of trades up under my belt. So, I'm... I ain't going to say never, but I'm not going back to selling dope or I'm not going to rob nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like... Now, if you come trying to rob me, you're going to get a different story. You're going to get a real John Wayne out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But as far as, like, I try to push a different message to let them know, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you can do different shit. How did I get a $50,000 horse? I ain't buy that, bitch. I made it. There it is. You, you know invested I mean? that time. Like, you got to grind to get where you want to be. Like, I didn't get on Boss Talk because this is my first year out. I've been grinding to get here. I've been Already. watching the show, you know what I'm saying? You see that? But I gotta He didn't get on boss talk. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that man not in there playing this serious business? I got a question because, you know, just like what you're saying, it's been it's been on my mind for the longest because I would always tell these young people who I know that are in the streets, I'm like, you can turn that illegal business into a legal business. You don't have to go work for nobody because people always, always would say, I don't want to work for nobody. That's their main reason for doing that. Thanks. But then Working for yourself and being an entrepreneur, money don't always come as quickly. And that's another reason, too, why people say that they prefer to be in the streets. Because does the money come that quick for every single person that goes in the street? Yeah, no, it doesn't. And, that's the and thing what I'm people got to understand, having a job is not the worst thing in the world. You know, some people have jobs because you got medical benefits, you got retirement exactly. coming. Like you preparing for when you're not able to work no more. You know, people study worried about the little money that they get right there, and I understand that, like, because the things that you want, you can't necessarily get. And the things that you need, sometimes you can get that, and it's really about what you need, not about what you want, but we go for our wants, and it exactly. drives us crazy. But people work because of benefits and everything. When you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business, you got to bring the money in. If you got a job, mm -hmm. you know you're getting paid at the end of the two weeks. Exactly. But if you're an entrepreneur... And you don't make that money come in, or you're not ready to work 50, 60 hours a week compared to the 40 hours you would have worked with a job, your business is going but under. But you got to think about it. Most of these guys on the street, they're entrepreneurs unless you're just working for somebody and getting you know, paid like a regular job, really. But if you're out there doing your thing on your own, you're an entrepreneur. You're making your own money for yourself. Okay. You the said honest. on the streets? Yeah. But yeah, you spending... And you should understand that entrepreneurship along with legal entrepreneurship because it's people right. that may put 60, 80 hours in and they, it, ain't, it ain't moving this week. But let me ask you this, Larry. You, you, are, you are one of those guys that to be Larry Hoover Jr. and to be the son of Larry Hoover Sr. and to be going on a job in a city where everybody know who you are, 
um, that's that takes a different type of person as well. You know, people they looking at you like, oh, that's such and such. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gonna automatically put the spotlight on you, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. How did you handle that? Okay, for one, the check came home, <laughs> and my son went to Catholic school. My daughter went to Catholic school. I pay the bills at home, so that's one thing. Two. You know who my father is, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. You know where he's been at all his life, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. I actually got to see the example of when it don't go right. You don't know how many people that I done met that was my uncle this and that and there. All dead. All in jail. Yeah. So I got examples on how it's going to work out. Even the people that looked like it was doing, they was doing good. Yeah. You know. I, what else do I need to get an understanding on how this might go? Yeah, but and you say that. And you've always had that understanding even yeah. when you were a teenager? No, no. When I was a teenager, I, I tried some things. Right. But I got an understanding at an early age. My best friend got killed in the street. I remember, you, saying saying I remember and, you said that. you know, I, I stand on that. That helped me mm-hmm. change my life. As a kid, I had dreams of following what I seen. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was lucky enough to... Learning Just not early. keep going with it Cause I got right. plenty of fr- Like he said He had a bunch of friends That was dead By the time he was 21 mm-hmm. I could fill up a, sh- a shirt With people Associates and friends That I know That's dead the bubble. Mm-hmm. Yeah And and that's what, That's that's the thing about it uh, Larry Is that Still Yet and still Your Your example you, Just for me to speak on it You know what I mean Is an example that People who say they can't They can If they give it They all and they, if they if they get out of self, you know what I mean. It's a choice. Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you can you can do it, but it's just you have to be conditioned to say, I don't care about what nobody else think. I'm doing what I need to do. And like you said, you got an example. But then, and I ain't gonna stay on this too long. But a lot of people could have took that a whole different route and started to say, you know what. My dad is such and such. I'm going to go on out here yeah, and do this. Because you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because my dad, the whole wait in the streets. They wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think you think straight. You know, that's why you're still here right now. Mm-hmm. You know? hey, they, hey, they wouldn't be right here. It was, it, it, it was very possible. Yeah. You know, I got people that look at me like I'm weak because I didn't want to go do that or take that chance. I don't right. care. Yeah, you can't care, really. You know, I, But you have a lot of the young kids who, just, just like you talk about health insurance and all of that, young kids don't care about health insurance. They're thinking about, they're not even going to live to see 30 because in, in their mind, street cats be like, I'm either going to be in prison or dead. It's like they take that as a as a goal. Like, no, that's no. where I'm going to be. They quit before they try. That's real. Yeah. They, they start off and somebody tell them it's not possible. They take in that information, they believe it, and they go with it. Mm. Instead of... Even putting the effort there. They don't know if they could get a decent job. They don't know what they could be. Somebody told them, you can't be this, and this is not going to happen. And they say, okay, I'm going to go to the streets and do this because that's the only way I'm going to get what I want. Before they even take a shot at trying to be anybody or do anything. And it's not even only that. I've heard, yourself included, would say, you know, yeah, I do it for the money. But then some people would say, well, I do it for the girls. Because when I can dress all this nice clothes and flashy cars, some of these girls don't want the guy who, you know, nine to five or making minimum wage or making this amount. They want a big baller who, you know, riding up in three, four cars every single day, whatever, dress. That's however. Well, but they if they and if that's all they want, they should start taking credibility for what part, what role they play in some of the tearing down of the community. Man, that's real. That's true. And I, I definitely can attest to that. Like it, it doesn't give, give the greatest results when it comes to the seed and harvest. You, you definitely reap what you sow when you start to do things that are out of the ordinary and, and doing things where you just don't even care about integrity, you know, or morals or any of that stuff. So you that's, gotta be sharp. That's mainly <clears throat> the problem though. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these young dudes don't even know what integrity or morals is. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, and, and to bounce back on what she was saying as far as just, yeah, you can take you can take a dude from the streets. He an entrepreneur himself. But is he willing to take that same mindset that he got in the streets mm-hmm. to a business plan, to take it somewhere to another level to where you ain't got to look over your shoulders while you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, selling your drugs or hitting your licks or doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, you can sit in the house behind your computer or you can get in the truck and, and go make you 150000 a year versus trying to hit this quick lick. Oh, I got 10 bowls. But them 10 bowls going to get you 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? You ain't versus gonna get ta- that time back either. Yeah, versus taking that, that that longer route to get to your destination. You know what I mean? Like, and you can obtain more doing legit than you can illegit. You know what I'm saying? Because most time when you do shit illegal, you can't put in your name. That's real. You can't go get no house. You can't put. You can't go buy no property. More than likely, it's gonna be in either your girl name or your mama name. Mm-hmm. Because they gonna be looking where this money come from. That's real. And fifty percent, or maybe even sixty percent of them get screwed over by their mama or that girl anyway, and by take the, the money. They, by the time they go to jail. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump subjects. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. <laughs> Any genre. Number one. George Strait. George Strait. That's the first George first Strait George that we done had on Boss Talk One Hundred One. Country. Hell yeah, let's <laughs> get it. King of it. <laughs> you see, I'm married to a Jamaican. I can. Get, I don't no, know that he, name. Okay, he tell rap. me what song. You know what I'm saying? Tell, so tell me a song. Tell me a song. I might know the song. Tell me his popular song. He got chick, yes or no. I mean, he got he got hits. Got a bunch of hits. I don't know. He got a CD called "The Greatest Fifty Hits" from George Strait. Okay, well He's I'm going to have to look him one. up. I got to look him up. Number two. Man, so now I'm going to go back to my rap category. Um, You can't give me three. That's yeah, all you that's, getting. That's everybody it, gets all three. All thousand and some people. You done seen the show. You watch it. You know what's going down. Boosie. Number two. Boosie. Boosie. Ooh, wow. I'm Boosie, man. I'm Zoom, Zoom right, right back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Number three. Any genre. She trying to get him out of out, anyway. He just went from George Strait yeah. to Boosie. Hell, you can't. You know that. Mm, jelly roll, jelly roll. That's the one. Yeah, you work. You that's yeah. Jelly roll. We we talking. All right, let's get it. You yeah, up to it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got. I ain't gonna lie. I can't leave my other two. I'm not gonna do it. Man, you can. You cannot leave my rich on the corner. I got that cold food. No, 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 no yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at. Uh, here's a few of them in my bed. I'm trying to get. I, I had reached out to him. I almost had him. I'm gonna get him though. Yeah. I, I'm definitely going for Jay. You gonna make that happen? I talked to and him Kanye. already. Kanye, you already talked to him. Yeah, we yeah Jay and Kanye. You. I said, "Boy, I'm tough, ain't it?" You trying to go? Everybody home. that he been with, I'm going with. Yeah. You know <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know what, man? We just got to keep working, man, and keep doing what's right, throwing out the positive vibes, trying to do something to help. Make motivation in our people, man, in our culture. That's nice. important. And the stuff you said today and the stuff that you live, the way that you represented yourself here on Boss Talk 101, hey, man, it, it, it's it's on that level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why we want to see our brothers go this. You know, brothers like you, your age, even 25, We re- do you reach out and get any of those young men to surround you and try to show them the way? Man, I just had an artist myself, uh, Young Reckless Bull. Okay. He got locked up. Damn. But you was trying. Yeah. That's yeah. all right. Just keep trying. Don't give up. Oh, no. Nah. That's I mean, what I was wondering. Uh, uh, Is there any programs out here who help, like, see kids the on the street? I'm talking, like, see st- kids, you know, on the street doing their thing, whatever, and be like, somebody who's an ex, you know, but got somewhere in life, go up to them and say, hey, let me show you a better way. Let me I, oh, show I do you that how all you the can time, do You know what I mean? Like, I don't care what kids I, if I encounter them and they in my presence, we're going to speak positivity and I'm going to tell them, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, what you got going on? They gonna live in all. I'm living like this. Hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? Go to school, go do this. I ain't telling you to go to college, but I'm telling you to get that education so that you're not out here dumbfounded just by anything that they tell you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's like, real. You gotta know for yourself what you want, man. You know but a lot I mean? of schools don't even teach you how to live this life that we live every day. Once you get out of school, they never have, man. Thank you so much, Jay. Jay been in the building now. Jay Brown, he said he on Boss Talk 101. Thanks. Larry Hoover Jr. in the building, man. You guys, man, I appreciate y'all for coming up, man, blessing the platform. Man, me and Larry been trying to put this together for a long time now. <laughs> he always tell me about you ever since the day mm-hmm. I met him. Yeah. It's been, he, he go hard for you, man. And that, to have, that's a that's favor. That's favor from God. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's just good to be able to finally meet you. And, and I hope like this, like this won't be the last time, but every time you got some project coming out, you and Larry or you yourself hit me up. Just come on up to Dallas. Sure. Or I'll be in Houston, too. I done been down there a few times interview. I come up here quite often. My well, little girl stay up here. Already. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to link back up. I'm going to give you my number. We're going to lock it in. Mm-hmm. So. It's going down, man. Yeah. Did I do you justice, Larry? 
Yeah, yeah. Already, <laughs> man. <laughs> he not gonna say no. No, nah, you know, no. Nah, the, the, what, the, what, well, actions speak loud in the words. He, he show back up. That shit, that tells okay. me everything I need to know. Yeah. And he don't deny my phone calls yet. I ain't worried him enough yet. <laughs> even call, hey, even when he out the country, he'll still listen to me talk. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the bosses talk. Oh yeah.